Here we are in FreeCAD. I've been working with Welding Empire on making a welding trolley design that uses a lot of angle iron. And some conversations I've had with Welding Empire has uh, made me think it would be very beneficial to go through how to make something like a part library of sorts for angle iron and anything else that you might want to do. I'm doing angle iron in this as an example. But you can do pretty much anything with this technique. So first off, how would I make a library of standard angle sizes? And there's a lot, of ways, a lot of ways to do this, especially if you approach it programmatically. I'm going to show how to do this just with user interface. And uh, so first thing I've done is gone to the spreadsheet, click this left button, and notice spreadsheet shows up in the tree. I double click spreadsheet to show it. And I would like to see my spreadsheet and my graphics display at the same time. So it's pretty easy to click on Windows and Tile. And now it's tiled all of my open windows. I'll get rid of this. And I'd like to resize these things, but I can't. And I can't on purpose because if you have this problem, hopefully this will save you a lot of frustration. The reason I can't resize these windows is because I'm using a style sheet. Right? I think it's just a little bit of a booger with style sheets. So I open up my preferences here. And I change to no style sheet, apply. Oh, no style sheet and apply. There we go. And now I can resize no problem. So if you have that uh, problem where you can't resize your windows, try your style sheets. Now I'm going to give some uh, column value names. All right, now let's go, uh, let's go model something real quick. I'm going to go into part design and I can really choose this um, any way I want, but I'm going to choose the XZ plane here. And let's go with polyline. And we'll give that a horizontal with the H key. Now I want to add some fillets in. Let's say that we want this to be a simulated rolled part or something like that. So there's some, some sketch fillets and let's merge the centers of these which I think in FreeCAD is make coincident is the right term. Oh, it's this button here. And now we have a consistent thickness because those arcs share the same center. Let's add a horizontal relationship here and a vertical relationship here. We'll add an equal relationship between these two lines and an equal between these. And that means that we have the same uh, thickness and height in our sketch. That's what we want. So normally, all we need to do is dimension this and be done. But when we make a library, of course, we'll have to maybe do a save as and edit everything on the sketch level again and save as and edit, edit everything on the sketch level again, right? It's a bit uh, tiresome. So let's make sure that we only have to do that once and have edits be in a much easier way. Uh, for description, let's go with, uh, how about inner radius first? Right, so what's this radius? What's the height and thickness? And the inner radius, let's say it's 0.075 inches. The height, let's make that 2 inches. And the thickness, 0.25. Now, there is a problem. Uh, notice my units are in inches, but if I choose a, uh, a radius here, and let's say I just want to link this to my spreadsheet, capital S for spreadsheet, spreadsheet dot, and then I can reference this cell with, uh, it's going to be A, so B2, spreadsheet dot B2. Two nine five three thousandths of an inch in radius here when we wanted 0 0.075 well that's a problem and the reason is the native format in FreeCAD is millimeters and so it looks like even though that we're set to inches and we have a value in inches here FreeCAD is converting this to millimeters so we just need to make um, a few changes either one set your units to millimeters and never have this problem, or two, do a quick conversion. I can call this 
value millimeters, right? And I can say equals is going to be B2 times 25.4, right? So that's going to be 1.9 equals B3 times 25.4. And we're going to say equals B4 times 25.4. And if I change this to spreadsheet.c2, which is where we converted it, well, there's our 75 thou. And we got our 75 thou from this cell. And you can tell it's right here, uh, 1.975. So we'll do this again. Uh, let's say we want our overall height. And of course, this angle pre-assumes that our angle is going to be uh, the same dimension either way. Um, you can always just make another variable if you don't like that. But uh, oh, and, and one other thing, uh, there's nothing wrong with just directly referencing spreadsheet values, but it can get a little bit con confusing if you have a bunch of variables and you have, you know, spreadsheet.c2, c5, you know, whatever. So you can also come over here in properties, say alias, and we can call this whatever we want, IR, let's say, there we go, capital I, capital R, right? And now if I go to edit this dimension, we can say spreadsheet.ir. And that can be an easier name to remember than what the cell location is. So if I right click properties, alias, we'll say something like height, properties, alias, and say something like thickness. I think something may have gone wrong there. Yeah, it looks like I've entered an invalid value. So I'm going to call this thick. Thickness, interestingly, does not work as a global variable in SOLIDWORKS either. A little fun trivia for you. So we're going to add in a vertical dimension and we're going to say spreadsheet dot height. And now our height is a driving factor in our sketch. We'll add in a horizontal and an equation spreadsheet dot thick. So now all of these are driving uh, values and if I close and extrude maybe I'll extrude midplane and even <laughs> I think even during the fact I can say um, length and maybe we want a standard of 25 inches of length and we're gonna say equals B5 but I have to do a capital B5 times 25.4, we'll create an alias and call this length. And that went in well. And then I can come over here and my extrusion length is going to be spreadsheet dot length. And I can change this to be symmetric to plane. And there we have a standard piece of angle iron. So I can do a save as and save off this piece of angle iron. The next thing that I can do is change my value. Maybe I want my height to be taller at three inches. Notice how the model immediately updates to the dimensions that I specify. Right, maybe I want this value to be only five thou. Well, then the inner radius goes way down to five thou. Likewise, if I want my uh, radius to be an eighth of an inch, updates immediately. So I can change any parameter that I want to and have it immediately update. I can change my length to be 30 and it updates, right? It's beautifully simple. So I do a save as, type in new numbers, save as, type in new numbers, save as, and very quickly, without much effort, build a, a, a part library, in this case for angle, but it can work for pipes or flanges or anything else. 
especially anytime you're given a tabulated drawing from a supplier, you can easily use these kinds of global variables or what you think of as aliases or whatever you want to call them and make these sorts of uh, library type parts efficiently and easily. And then when working with angle, you can always uh, simulate a cut, like a 45 degree angle cut, by using something easy like a draft. So if I highlight this as my neutral plane, I actually have to highlight this face to be the drafting face, right? And I add a draft here, and I specify my neutral plane here, and I make this 45 degrees. Then we've just made a quick and easy cut uh, with very little effort. So. There's uh, easy ways to edit this beyond just the uh, just the variables. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.